but make up for it in power with a combined total of 54 knockouts in their 89 bouts. Okay, coming up, a WBC strawweight champion, Ricardo Lopez, defends his title against a WBC number two contender in Javier Vargas. Once again, back down to ringside, Steve Albert. Steve? All right, thank you, Jim. Uh, we're, we're trying to collect ourselves, but we're still quite numb to what we just saw. Let's talk about the upcoming fight. Ricardo Lopez and Javier Vargas are from Mexico. Both have 27 knockouts. But that's where the similarities end. Vargas is a southpaw. Lopez is conventional. But the biggest difference, Lopez is 37-0. Vargas 37-14-1. Lopez, the WBC strawweight champion. Vargas, despite 14 losses, ranked number two as a light flyweight. But in fairness to Vargas, he won his last six fights all by knockout, 10 of his last 11, which has allowed him to climb up the rankings. True, Vargas has recently been elevated, but what kind of shot does he have against the undefeated champion? What are your feelings to that? Well, I don't think he has much chance. One guy has learned how to win and never learned how to lose, and the other guy has learned how to lose 14 times. Give me the champion. He's smooth, he's sharp, and he has, at the, at the peak of his form, I, I really am the size. Uh, Vargas is so small. He's barely five feet tall, no matter what he says. I just think the champion has an easy night. All right, and both the hometown products, Lopez and Vargas, fighting in front of the Mexico fans. So who do they root for, Bobby? Well, I'm sure they all have their own factions, clans, and fans that are rooting for each one of them. And depending on the seating arrangements, we may see some good fights in the audience if this is a good fight here in the ring and it's close. This is the kind of fight that can set up a cross-town or cross-country rivalry. I think that uh, right now, though, Lopez being 37-0 will take the majority of the uh, cheers. All right, Bobby. Let's take our first look at the challenger right now, Javier Vargas, out of Merida, Mexico. Uh, Vargas, 30, a southpaw fighting at 105 for the first time. Uh, back in 88, he lost to Chiquita Gonzalez via TKO round five for the Mexican 108-pound title, title he later uh, won. He was also beaten in a hotly disputed contest by Michael Carbajal in 91, his only uh, title shot. Vargas hopes for another shot at either of the two main attractions on tonight's card. He is 37-14-1 with 27 knockouts. And now, let's take a look at the champion, 27-year-old Ricardo Lopez, 11 straight title defenses over four years, undefeated, 37-0 with the impressive 27 knockouts. He's out of Cuenavaca, Mexico, now lives here in Mexico City, hopes that his success will someday lead to showdowns with Carvajal and Gonzalez also hopes to follow in the footsteps of uh, Chavez this evening Lopez puts his unblemished record in longtime championship on the line his 12th defense of the WBC strawweight title which he won in October of 90 12 and 0 in title fights let's size him up tail of the tape Lopez 27 three years younger than Vargas Lopez 5 5 and a quarter as uh, Ferdy talked about Vargas only 5 1 and a half Lopez getting down to 105, Vargas 104, and a three-inch reach advantage, Lopez. And to the WBC rules, 10-point must system, three judges scoring, no standing eight count, no three knockdown, only the ref can stop the fight, fighter cannot be saved by the bell, except in the final round. So here at the Plaza de Toros, Mexico City, we're getting ready for the WBC strawweight title, Lopez, Vargas, official introductions, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Damas y caballeros, esta es una atracción especial por el título peso paja del Consejo Mundial de Boxeo. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, we present the WBC Strongweight Championship of the World, brought to you by Don King Productions in association with Promotora Armaga, King Vision, SET Pay Per View, and Corona. This band is sanctioned by the World Boxing Council. Presidente Jose Suleiman, Supervisor. Juan José Torres Landa, along with La Comisión de Box de Distrito Federal. Presentando a los jueces, introducing to you the judges at ringside. Victor Cervantes, Martin Denken, and Helacio Perez. And referee is Lupe Garcia. All right, fans, here we go with the WBC Strongweight Championship of the World, scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. El Campeonato Peso Paja del CMB de 12 rounds. Presentando al retador en la esquina azul, presenting to you first the challenger on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, entering the ring, wearing white trunks, y representando Merida, Yucatan, Mexico. Pesando 47.5 kilogramos, he weighed in at 104 and 3 quarter pounds. Con un record de 37 victorias, 14 derrotas y un empate, 
Tiene 27 victorias por knockout. His record includes 37 wins, 14 losses, one draw, with 27 wins coming by way of knockout. Introducing tonight's challenger, ranked the WBC number two light flyweight in the world, aquí está el retador número dos peso mosca ligero en el mundo, Javier Candelita Vargas. Y al campeón en la esquina roja, his opponent across the ring, the defending champion on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with red and green trim. Originario de Cuernavaca, Morelos, y ahora representando la ciudad de México. Con un peso de 47.7 kilogramos, he weighed in at the strong weight limit of 105 pounds. Tiene un sobresaliente récord de 37 victorias sin derrota, con 27 victorias por knockout. His outstanding record includes 37 wins, no losses, with 27 big wins coming by way of knockout. Introducing the undefeated WBC strawweight champion of the world, tonight making the 12th defense of his title, demos la bienvenida al campeón, el sensacional e invicto, Ricardo Finito. López. Aquí está el referee Lupe García. Bien, señores, ya platicamos en los vestidores. Recuerden que los vales son puntos menos y puede llegar hasta la descalificación. Hagan una buena pelea, sobre todo limpia, y que ganen mejor. Suerte los dos. Before we move on, we want to report that Luis Santana is semi-conscious in the infirmary here at Plaza de Toros in guarded condition. Semi-conscious, guarded condition. We'll update you as soon as we get something. And right now, we're getting set for the next fight. Sorry, sir. And that's a sad commentary because every boxing rule says an ambulance should be pleasant and a, a hospital notified as soon as the guy's in that condition. I saw Davey Moore die one night oh. just doing that in one of our fights. Well, uh, certainly uh, put a pall over this uh, outdoor arena. It has numbed us, but we're now into the WBC Strawweight Championship. Lopez Vargas. Lopez uh, told us that Vargas Southpaw style poses no problems. In fact, of Lopez's 12 title defenses, including tonight, six are Southpaw. Lopez never knocked down. The big thing he wants to get at Gonzalez and Carvajal someday. He's a sharp, classy boxer with good combinations. But I'll tell you what, this Vargas, he's a determined mean look on his face and I think he came to fight tonight. He's a rough looking guy. You know he's, he's tough and he's rough and he's used to coming in and, and taking punishment. But uh, I, I tell you what Lopez is a master boxer. He just started out and you can see the class. No, they're both wearing white trunks so Lopez white with the green and red trim. He's now on the right of your screen. Vargas white with the black trim along the belt. Uh, already uh, Vargas commenting that uh, he was butted. I didn't see the butt. Yeah, they kind of just clashed heads a little bit. I'll tell you, during the interviews, Lopez, who seems to be in perfect shape, said that his body was starting to betray him. They was thinking about retirement within the next couple of years. I know about bodies betraying him. Yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> Lopez, very calm and composed. Uh, He's Julio Cesar Chavez's protege. He's also extremely popular here in Mexico. 27 knockouts and 37 wins. Tremendous power for his weight class. But he's not a one-punch fighter, he told us. Relies on the accumulation of punches. Well, he's throwing very crisp combinations. They're all landing, and they have nice power with them. He likes the right hand and says that against lefties, he likes to go left and then shift right. Lopez the champion, he's got the green and gold trim and red stripes down the side of his trunks. He said he's not going in for the knockout. No idea what's going to happen. He says knockouts are circumstantial, very philosophical. You can't predict the knockout, but he feels very prepared. He feels he can knock out Marquez. Oh, I don't know. There's a few fighters I can normally predict the knockout. <laughs> the opponents uh, are less than uh, stellar. Okay. Well, this kid's been very tough, though. I mean, he, he hasn't been knocked out a lot, uh, Vasquez, and uh, he's here to fight. It may be the same kind of fight that we had in the first fight, where a superior champion um, is just left to fight a long and dreary fight. 
Well, Vargas with a wild miss there with the left. 13 years of light flyweight. His first fight tonight is a strawweight. But it's all so close. I don't think it really makes that much of a difference. Vargas has fought with the best. Very confident. But they invented paperweights yet. The wind is blowing. Se hace un gran precioso, profe, cuando vires con el gancho, que vires, tú vires hacia acá, él queda aquí, tira gancho derecho, o upper derecho, pero seco, ¿me, me, entendí, me entiendes? Sí. Right. Instructions about how to hook with the left, and when the guy turns away from it, to come back with the right, either a hook or an uppercut to the body. Just technical stuff, very uninterested here, if they're just uh, surgical about the thing. Let's see this butt. Bobby, you saw it, you call it. Well, you know, it, it was just... Coming in, uh, the, the short guy Vargas got to come in. That's what happened. He came in, and the champion went to the body, ducking his head down, and he walked kind of right into it. You watch yeah. it again, you'll see it just bang. Yeah, yeah, that's a better view. I think I think you see it better there. It's ironic because just as you said, have they invented paperweights yet? We had a gust of wind that blew all my notes, <laughs> and you were referring to weight division, obviously. Uh, light oh, flyweight yeah. and straw <laughs> weights. Good one, Bobby. Paperweights right. is next. Absolutely. Who knows? Round two. WBC strawweight championship. Vargas confident because of his experience. He feels he can take a punch. He wants to go toe to toe with Lopez. Now, Lopez is talking to him. He keeps talking to him when he gets in close. Further information on Luis Santana. He's going to be okay. Great news, but they're going to do a brain scan as a precaution. Let's hope he's all right. Let us pray. The brain scan is the very least thing you have to do, and you got to do it to me. It's uh, all the more reason they should have just stopped it and gotten them right out of here immediately. Absolutely. There's, there's laws now that you have to have an ambulance present. I'll bet you everything I got there wasn't an ambulance here tonight. And this place is so big, we're probably taking 20 minutes to get to it. Especially with the traffic jam. Right? Very tough to maneuver in and out of this uh, venue. Well, let's not let what happened before detract from the interest that's going on right now because Ricardo is taking a part. Uh, Javier Vasquez, uh, Ves Vasquez has not had a moment yet where he's come on and showed anything. Vargas told me that he thought he had the much better chin, which he's obviously going to need here, and that that was going to make the difference in the later rounds. Well, I'll tell you what, he's going to take a lot of punches at this rate if he keeps getting hit like that. Well, he keeps punching low, and the referee has not said a word yet to Vasquez. Vargas, a southpaw. He's committed to taking this title. Very determined as he comes forward on the champion, Ricardo Lopez, who's undefeated, his 12th title defense. 37-0, 27 knockouts. Very classy looking young man out of Puerto Vaca, Mexico. Less than a minute to go in round two. He's a great kid to talk to also. Very nice. polite, quiet, just very nice. They butted heads again by accident, and there's a cut on Vargas's face. Just uh, below the left sideburn, there's blood. Is that blood? Left yeah. sideburn? Left sideburn oh, Lopez goodness. on the front, I believe, on the face yes. of Vargas. And it's streaking now down the left side of uh, Lopez's face. Boy, he is getting beat up. It's only the second round, and he looked like he ran into hand grenade. You see a little cut over the eye. I believe the left eye of Vargas. Very hard to tell because he's got the hair coming down his face, but I believe you'll see blood there. Heavy right hands by Lopez. That blood should not bother him that much. It's not really into the eye. It's coming down the side of the face, but uh, Vargas staggered. Vargas staggered. But Vargas trying to spread that blood around. Yeah, do all, damage. Yes. <laughs> It's all over Lopez. Ya está parado, ya lo tiene. Vas a dar, van a parar la pelea, le estás dando una chinga. Casa. Aquí hay gracia. Vargas's corner just told him, you've got him stopped now. You, all you got to do is press on. Let's look at the headbutt again. This is the second one. Right oh. there. Yeah. Yeah. 
And let's take another look because we have these wonderful cameramen gives us exactly what we're looking for. Keep your eye on the head of Lopez. There he goes. Oh, he came down and up right into his a eye. Billy goat. Yeah, Vargas is cut over the eye. His cut is on the side of his head. And, and Vargas is corner. I can't believe it. Said you got him stopped now. You got him standing straight up. And I just go in there and take care of business. I can't believe it. Round three scheduled for 12. Round two highlighted by some butts and some cuts. Now Vargas sensing the urgency going right at Lopez. Lopez remaining composed. And doubling up on the left is Lopez. He turns that right hand in beautifully. Just stops on a dime. Bang, right down the pipe as you should with a southpaw. Now Vargas coming back. Vargas just standing right in and lunging forward. The tough kid. Oh boy, is he tough. Nice block of a right hand uppercut by Vargas. And remember, Vargas is the attacker here. He's coming after him. It's just that he can't pay that kind of price for long. Lopez counter punching. Oh, 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 two low blows. The referee right there, not, not a word. Unbelievable. Lupe Garcia of Mexico not saying a thing to Vargas, and that was so obvious. Not a word, not even a hint. The cut on the side of Lopez head, bleeding pretty freely, but not a problem with the vision. Ignacio Beristain, the cut man. And not a problem with stopping him. Cut on the side of the head. Forget about it. He can't good, get hurt. Good right hand by Vargas, who's just pulling his way in. So appropriate. Nice right by Vargas as he was turning away. I'll tell you what, he said he was gonna he thought the fight was gonna end in a knockout, and that his ultimate goal was to fight the winner of Gonzalez Carbajal. He must love punishment. Now Lopez, oh. combination missing with the left. Vargas looking to take advantage, but doesn't do anything. Because he's stunned. I'll tell you what, you gotta give Vargas some credit. He can hit with everything and just doesn't even take a backward step if he can help it. Well, he just got rocked at Vargas. And he's in a little bit of trouble right now, but he keeps coming forward. Holding and hitting. Look at that slooping by Vargas. Pretty nifty. I've never seen somebody's uh, boxing shoes come undone like that. Shoelace uh, undone. Lopez, left foot. Normally, in like, I know in Atlantic City, New Jersey, when we fight, they make you tape them. The oh, you make, check, yeah. I, makes you tape them. Most places they do. I've Obviously never, not the case here. I've never seen anybody not tape. I mean, I, I, it's been well, since I've been in boxing the 50s. So, <laughs> so this is just some place where they don't tape. <laughs> what else are we going to see? Another, the, the home of the WBC. Time called ruptured shoelace. Round three continues, and look at this. Lopez just spinning Vargas around like a top end. He's really penetrating. If you look at Vargas's eye, he's got a cut above it. There's absolutely no blood coming out. It's just open and just sitting there. Is he jumping? I don't know, but I tell you one thing. He keeps hitting low, and the referee keeps ignoring him. Meanwhile, Lopez Vasquez, is singing right? Yeah, Vasquez is so short that he puts in those punches. There it is again, right there, right on the cup. I'll tell you what, Bernie, they weren't too upset about Santana getting hit in the back of the head. I guess this is going to be nothing by comparison. <laughs> there it is again. Lopez airing it out and really punishing Vargas's face. Well, that's got to take an effect on Lopez pretty soon. You know, those things hurt. But showing no effects. Lopez just bouncing around on the balls of his feet. Oh, oh, oh by oh, Lopez. That was one uh, payback. That's a payback. Action, little fight. Little guy. You got him beat. All you got to do is throw more. He says, Look at that truck guy sitting on him. That's a leftover from the Titanic. Sinking. Look at that. Look how high that cut is. Yeah, it's very high and it's deep. All right, let's take a look at the way that this little Vargas is tough and the way he punches. Look at that, right on the butt. He's a southpaw, using the right hook. It's his most effective weapon. And of course, around, you'll see there's the low blow contest starting again. Here is, here's what he loves so well. Nice right, a little south of the border, as we are south of the border. Yeah, yeah, that was the wrong guy. That was the guy that threw it, but the guy that's been receiving it has been Lopez. A foul marred fight. We go into round four. Delay. They forgot to put the mouthpiece into Vargas's mouth. By the way, uh, Santana being examined by a neurologist. Two doctors have confirmed that he was never totally unconscious. That's the latest word we get. So does that mean he doesn't win the title? See it right now. 
I'm not even going to touch that. Yeah, they, they, they are now doing a uh, cover up. Well, certainly our, our spirits dampened by the situation that took place in the last fight. This fight moves on round four for the WBC Strawweight Championship. I guarantee you, by tomorrow morning, it will be a complete. It will be a, a Mexican water game. Everything will be clean, and your eyes will have deceived you. Vargas continues to come oh, forward. Look at that. Oh, low blow. Even Lopez uh, indicating to the referee who does nothing. The referee gave a little quick warning, but obviously this is not a referee who wants to get involved too much. That's because uh, Lopez, for the first time, grabbed themselves. And, hey, listen. Lupe Garcia of Mexico is the third man in the ring. Vargas keeps coming, keeps coming. Boy, like rainwater, he's there. I'll tell you what, he's not a big puncher. He's kind of like Chinese water no. torture. He's just all over you. He says this is the most important fight of his 13-year career, and he's acting it out. Oh. Two low blows. Three low blows. It's a low blow combination. It's a festival. The referee right there. I guess he doesn't think. I don't know what he thinks. Two more. Well, he's so used to being south of the border. Yeah. I would love to have a punch counter just for low blows in this fight. Tonight, it might break the meter. Here's a good left hand by Lopez. And Vargas is trying to use that cut as target practice, but Lopez not giving him a chance. But his face is beginning to bluff up. I'll tell you what, they're keeping some pace. Vargas doesn't want to take a backward step. Lopez is happy to punish him on the way in. But to his credit, uh, Vargas is getting some punches through. It is a frenetic tempo to this fight. Non-stop punching. This is what the Mexican crowd likes. And you know what? Slowly, just slowly, Vargas is turning this. Because he's no longer just getting smashed. He's doing a lot of smashing on the side, and the other guy's looking weary. So it's not a one-way beating. No, it's, it's uh, although I had Lopez winning the round, it's, it's getting by less and less in the margin department. Well, I'll tell you what, the last one I gave even, I hate to give even rounds, they were just both going at it so hard. Except for the low blows, I mean, you know, it's, it's just an overwhelming force seems to be coming in at Lopez. Boy, this little guy is tough. Ooh. Oh, a right hand by Lopez that sends Vargas back a step or two and the bell sound. Coming up next, our main event as we go into the dressing room of the WBC IBF Light Flyweight Champion, Humberto Chiquita Gonzalez, now just moments away from his third get together with Michael Carvajal, hoping for a repeat of the rematch when Gonzalez won the upset split decision. Carvajal's first loss. Gonzalez, whose first job was in his parents' small butcher shop called La Chiquita here in Mexico City, has come a long way since those days. Tonight, he'll be center stage in front of his uh, many adoring fans at Plaza de Toros. Ve caminando, mira, Ricardo, vas caminando, caminando y golpeando con tu cabeza abajo, es simple. Si te quedas parado, le, te contesta. Ya veas y tiras gancho y caminas, vas, oye, vas caminando, vas caminando y pegando. ¿Oíste? Sube la mano, sube la mano derecha. We get ready for round five. Vargas lost to both headliners tonight, to Gonzalez in 88, TKO round five. Garba, Carvajal in 91, a 12-round decision. So he's got a lot of experience. Oh, combination by Lopez. Lopez now all over Vargas once again. I think his corner sees, hey, you're giving this guy some momentum here. He's starting to pick up. And even though you're smashing him, he's still coming on. He's landing some very hard shots. And those low blows are going to take it out of you. You better start fighting and stop this guy. Oh, what a shot. Oh, a right trust by Lopez. But this Vargas has a concrete head. Wow, what a tough kid this is. I'll tell you what, I don't know how his whole career couldn't be fighting like this because I don't know how he's still standing. I agree with you, Bobby. I don't know how a man has a full career in fights like this. Vargas, his face all puffed up, his uh, head cut. I mean, he is a complete mess, but he still comes forward. There appears to be a cut on top of Lopez's head yes. as well. No, that's been there for that's a while. The old, is that the old one? Yeah, that's, that's the old Panama Canal. I thought it was a little lower than that. Nah, it's right on the, on the part, and, he's, and it's uh, big. It sure, bleeds like that. You can see it all the way from here, pretty good distance. I mean, is it an open wound or is it just yeah, a no, it's an open, no, 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 it's an open wound. It's been there for a while. 
it's a, it's a kind you got to shave the head before you can sew them up, and that makes it look ugly the next day. I thought the initial cut was much lower. Yeah, that's it. It's a little misleading because the, the blood is streaking down the side of his face. It does look like it's a lower one, but it's near the top of the head. Very unusual. I see this is a kind of round. Oh, oh, look at these shots by Lopez, all with the right. Lopez turned south and did that all with his right hand. Now a left hand by Lopez that sends Vargas's head spinning back. Well, Vargas said his oh, chin is going to make the difference. Amazing boy, oh, that boy. Vargas is standing. And fighting back. And he says, come on, give me more. Look at this. He says, come on, because I can't come forward anymore. I'm tired. Wow. A minute left in the fifth round. The punishment is brutal by Ricardo Lopez. What a chance. Right on the target. Vargas thought he was going to be physically the strong of the two because he normally fights a little heavier than this, but I'll tell you what, these combinations and punches, he's going to be weak by the end of tonight. Yeah, his first fight is a straw weight. That just grazed. That could have been the end. It doesn't seem like any one punch is going to be the end of, uh, of Vargas because, boy, he's tough. My hat's off to him. A gutty performance here by little Javier Vargas, who stands 5'1 and a half, 104 pounds, 30 years old from Merida, Mexico, which is the capital of the state of Yucatan. Lost his only world title shot to Michael Carvajal. This is the fight of his life. Look at these shots he's taken. Then he answers back. Oh, look at this right hand by Lopez, and Vargas just laughs in his face. Unbelievable. He's laughing on the outside and crying on the inside. <laughs> so he's got to hurt right. Oh, has got to hurt. A good round for Lopez, a painful one for Garcia. Bobby, there's some, some rounds that are such beatings, whether the guy goes down or not, that sometimes I'm compelled to give him a 10-8 round. And you know what? That was a 10-8 round for me. That was a beating. All right, here's the Academy Award of acting in boxing. This is when you're getting killed and you act like it didn't even bother you. This is acting in the Elliot Kazan manner. This is De Niro, and uh, this is every boxing movie you ever saw. Watch this punishment. Raining blows. Raining blows, and here comes the acting. Come on, come on, that didn't hurt me. Well, I'll tell you why I wouldn't make it a 10-8 round myself is because here you see him taking a lot of punishment. He's getting hit with everything, but he's never non-combative at all. No. Never really, he's, truly he's, staggered. He's always throwing punches and trying, so I still give him 10-9, and, and even that, uh, he's, he's, he's digging himself a hole, but he is trying. I don't think so bad. I got a 49-46 because I'm giving him a lot more credit, apparently, than you are, because he is <laughs> making the fight. He's coming forth. That one round was just went completely the other way. He was getting momentum and he just stopped. Round six, scheduled for 12 for the WBC Strawweight Championship. Incredible that Vargas, the challenger, is still standing. 13-year veteran. He's been in there with the best and the experience is showing. Look at this exchange. In the whole beginning of the round is Vargas. The whole beginning of the round is him chasing and punching and everything. And unless Lopez decides to stop and really fight, this guy's taking a round. Yeah, but on his way in, he absorbs an awful lot. I think that. Yeah, yeah, Bobby. You know, it's it, you know, you can argue all day long. It's a very, it's a very interesting fight. That's what we can say. Oh, sure. Entertaining to the fans. Blood-soaked trunks. The compound by the fact that they're white brings it out even more from the cuts earlier in the fight. A lot of low blows and headbutts in this particular fight. Remember, Mexican judges love this kind of valor. This kind of go forward against the machine guns kind of. Uh, valor that the Mexicans have. They love this. And this kid is winning the heart of the judges. I'm truly amazed with all the punishment that Vargas has taken that his cut doesn't even trickle. Yeah, I am too. I am too. Two judges from Mexico, one from the U.S. That's Marty Dinkin, Gelacio Perez, and Victor Cervantes from Mexico. If I, if I, if I got a guess, Bobby, they put in some solution into the cut that, that sealed it. Uh, not exactly legal anymore. One cell solution? You can get by with that. Let's yeah. not say it out on the air. That <laughs> there are people that put it in. Round six continues a little slower, which is understandable at the frantic pace of the last few rounds. Constant action in round four. Great round for Lopez in round five. Damaging round for uh, Vargas. But now, uh, 
looks like Lopez is trying to collect himself and get back into the fray. Wild miss by Vargas. Nice. nice. Good defense, defense by Lopez. Yeah, nice. Well, I'll tell you, just a one, he's got a one gear, just a one dimensional forward, 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 does not want to go backwards, Vargas. Yeah, he's in first also. He's in that rough gear. He's not in third. He's coming forward. He doesn't under move by Lopez any land. He doesn't slide in though. He just walks one foot in front of the next. Just coming in. Again, just pounding to the head of Vargas, and Vargas does not flinch. And keeps coming forward. Lopez not punching particularly hard this round. Not as effective as the last round. At least he seems to take a round off. Oh, low blow by Vargas. Low. Right in front of the rubber. Right on the thigh, not much damage. Fortunately for Lopez. Well, coming up next at Plaza de Toros, our featured attraction, Michael Carvajal, looking to win back his WBC IBF light flyweight titles from Chiquita Gonzalez. Here's Carvajal back in his dressing room about nine months after losing that split decision to Gonzalez in Englewood, California. He will not be the crowd favorite here in Mexico, but he is beloved back in his hometown, Phoenix, Arizona, where he has given back to the community by revamping an old church on 9th Street, renaming it the 9th Street Gym. Michael Carvajal getting set for the main event against Chiquita Gonzalez. They're telling him he doesn't want anymore. He's all yours. All you got to do is go get him. Well, this is a relentlessly optimistic corner that Vargas has got. I mean, they're telling him he's way ahead, and all he needs to do is stay right on top of him. They must all be related to him. <laughs> well, they're sure pushing. They're not a realist in the crowd. Vargas refuses to go down despite the assault of Lopez. Big right hand by Lopez. Again, Vargas remains on his feet. He really has an incredible chin. He doesn't move much. It doesn't snap when he gets hit. And he just walks right through. His balance, he doesn't even have his feet under him sometimes and doesn't get dropped. It's amazing. He's got that low center of gravity. Five, one and a half, 104. It's a little fire plug. Vargas, 37, 14 and one. 27 knockouts. Turn pro at 81. He's 30. Lopez undefeated, 37 and 0, 27 KOs. His 12th defense of the WBC strawweight title. 105 pounders. It's great to, for once to have the focus on the little guys rather than the higher weight classes. We are seeing tremendous skills here in front of us. The higher weights could never hold this type of pace. It's just impossible. Feverish pace. Look at these shots. Combinations, uppercuts, the whole repertoire, Lopez. But yet Vargas undaunted. He's taking some kind of punishment. He just got rattled through. Nothing. Vargas shakes his head, says, come on, pour it on, give me more. He is a determined man. Keep the punches up, says uh, yeah. Garcia. I don't speak the language, but I can tell. Look at this assault by Lopez. A barrage. Vargas bouncing off the ropes. And still trying and firing back. Stays right in front of him. Doesn't even look to hide. Some guys would run out of here, but not Vargas. I'll tell you what, first time I saw him take a step back on his own. He's getting a little tired. The accumulation is really building up now. So maybe he's human after all. It might appear that way. Well, I'll tell you what, I, not since Jake LaMotta have I ever seen a guy so willing to take punishment and refusing to go down. This is just a study in how tough the Mexican fighters are over the years. There's no question about that. What a study in courage, even though he's getting destroyed here, Javier Vargas. Coming up to 20 seconds remaining in round seven. Lopez, fresh on his feet, dancing around. Vargas comes right at him, hoping praying that maybe one punch might get through to Lopez. But you gotta wonder what's on those punches. Simple.
Otra que vuelve a hacer así, Vargas, se la van a parar, Vargas. ¿Eh? Cuando se pare, si no tira golpe, lo voy a parar la pelea. Very important just then. The referee came up and said, when you start this next round, if you don't fight back, I'm stopping the fight. That's very important. The referee just said, I'm stopping this fight if you don't fight back. And this is what he's talking about. Bobby, there was once five fights with Sugar Ray Robinson and Jake LaMotta. They were all like this, with Jake LaMotta being on the, on the tough side. Yeah, he was always like that. He would even hang his head out there, as this kid has, as a target, to, so he can get some chances to get punches in after he gets hit. Look how many land right on target. Look at that. Look at that. That's five, six, seven, um, eight. It's just incredible. And it's the same quality, a, a superior boxer, which Sugar Ray Robinson was, against an incredibly tough guy, Jake Lamotta was. Round eight, total domination by that man, the champion, Ricardo Lopez. Well, thus far, this night could be entitled Bloodfest in the bull ring, the way things have gone. The WBC Strawweight Championship on the line. Lopez in total charge. Let's see if Vargas answers back. And it's a night of surprises, because each time we thought it was just going to be a walkover, it's turned out to be a very tough fight. Do we have another shutout being pitched here tonight? I, I don't have any shutout. Bobby probably does. I, I gave him a lot of credit in the middle. Right now, he hasn't won the last three or four rounds. So I have a 69-64. I'm sure Bobby has about four or five points more than that. No, 70-63. I have a shutout. I haven't done anything with 10-8 rounds, so I'm only ahead of you by a little bit. And, you know, in all fairness to Vargas, as tough as he's been, he's just absorbed too much in each round. And even though the margin of winning early got closed a little bit, Starting to be another runaway. Now the fans beginning to sense something here as Lopez looks to move in and finally nail this one away. But Vargas won't cooperate. That referee is trying to stop this fight. That referee is right there. All he wants to see is no exchange back and it's all over. Lupe Garcia watching so closely the eyes of Vargas. Vargas wild, Vargas so tired, he has nothing on his punches. Just whipping them into the wind. Lopez with a right hand, but Vargas is doing his best. Any time now, any time. Here it is. That's it, it's over. You can't say he didn't warn him. No, he did. Lupe Garcia with a good move here. And I want to say, I believe that the, the disastrous events of the last fight inflicted the decision on the judge because yeah. I saw Suleiman motion, hey, if this keeps going, stop it. That thought process was definitely instilled because of what happened before. Yeah, absolutely. And it was on his mind, and I'm sure it was right out there. I, and I think Suleiman ordered it. I mean, they say, hey, we can't we can't afford two disasters in a row. We looked bad last time. One disaster enough. So they stopped the fight 133 of round eight with uh, Tony Lopez just inflicting incredible punishment on the head and body of Javier Vargas, who performed valiantly despite the defeat. But enough is enough. So there he is, Javier Vargas, who will fall to 37 15 and 1. We'll take a look at a whole bunch of the stoppage. Yeah, here's a stoppage that for some people might say was too soon, but it really was all academic, I think. He was not really in the fight, and he was taking a lot of punishment. Tremendous chin, big heart, good condition fighter, but just too much. And again, coming off what happened with Santana, I think they did the right thing. Uh, the only other flip side of it is, as you watch him take all this punishment, here's a man with a lot of pride who wants to finish on his feet, and sometimes that's taken away from him by the referee. But again, just clean punches. And even when he offered up punches now, Steve, they were missing, missing badly. So a gallant try by Javier Vargas, but Lupe Garcia said that is enough. Well, here you get one more look at it from, again, another angle. And the punches of Lopez are going down the middle. Their landings ripping the uppercuts in there. It's a kind of a token wave from Vargas. He's really done now. He's been beaten, and he's beaten, man. And save him the fight another day, because he was actually a lot of fun to watch. It was just a matter of time for Ricardo Lopez makes his 12th title defense. We are set for the official time. Let's go up to our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Damas y caballeros, tenemos el tiempo. Un minuto 33 segundos en round número 8. El referee Lupe Garcia terminó la pelea. Ladies and gentlemen, with the time of 1 minute 33 seconds in round number 8, the referee stops the contest. El ganador por knockout technical the technical knockout winner, Ricardo Finito Lopez.
So, Ricardo Lopez retains his WBC strawweight title as he makes his 12th defense and proves his record to 38-0. Lopez would love nothing more than to move up and wait someday, meet either Humberto Chiquita Gonzalez or Michael Carvajal. Well, coming up next, our main event, Gonzalez Carvajal 3. Here in this most intriguing setting, Plaza de Toros, Mexico, a 40,000-seat bull ring in Mexico City. And let's take you backstage into the dressing room of the champion, Humberto Chiquita Gonzalez, now just moments away from his third go-round with Michael Carvajal. The rubber match, they've split the first two. It's all coming your way soon. But first, we are set for post-fight reaction from the last fight. Let's go up to the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, in the ring. Ferdy. Was that the toughest fighter you ever fought? Um... No, no, he tenido rivales muy duros. Él es un rival muy fuerte, muy duro, pero he tenido otros rivales más difíciles. All right, he said he's had harder fighters than that, but this is definitely one of the hardest. ¿Por qué tú crees que le llevó tanto tiempo aguantar la golpe? Why do you think it took him so long to resist your your fight? Él es un peleador muy fuerte, muy duro. Creo yo que Es un peleador de mucho aguante y de verdad es muy valiente. He said he's very brave and he takes an awful good punch and he never expected a guy to keep coming on after all the punishment he inflicted. La, las, los punches por abajo te lastimaron. Your low blows, did it stop you? Did it bother you? Lo normal. Lo normal, no mucho. No mucho. No mucho. Not very much, he said. Y la cortada aquí arriba. Así me dolió un poquito. Un cabezazo. The, the, the cut hurt him, pero la sangre, the, the blood didn't bother you. La sangre no te... No te... Precipitó, no. Todo bien. All right. En, en, entonces fue una pelea buenísima para ti, para condiciarte para el, el ganador de esta pelea. In other words, this is a good fight to get you in shape for the winner of tonight's fight, yes. Don. Yes, this is the young man that is challenging tonight. The winner of the Chiquita Gonzalez and the Michael Cabajal fight. He wants to move up in weight and he wants to challenge the best. So it's going to be an opportunity for him after a grand performance he put on tonight that I think we may be able to do that and we'll see who's going to win in that super sensational fight we got coming up. Very good. Muchas gracias por todo. Buena pelea. And it goes back to Steve and Bobby at ringside. All right, thank you very much, Ferdy. So congratulations to Ricardo Lopez, TKO round eight over a gutty Javier uh, Vargas. And Ricardo Lopez on an illustrious list of uh, present undefeated champions. We'll take a look at the uh, top five. Uh, as you can see, Lopez updated to 38-0. He is number four. James.